All right, warriors, welcome back. Before we get started, we're gonna do a breathing exercise, five seconds, five Mississippi. So what we're gonna do is just provide ourselves a loop interrupter and uh, pause the video, go get your Bible. If not, prepare this on your smartphone as you're watching so you can follow along. And oh, it's gonna be like a, and look, this is for adults only. If you're a narcissist, it's gonna trigger you. If you're looking for a different insight of awareness, even those of you who say want to be a, a, a look at it from logical only, atheist uh, point of view, right? No, no worries, just follow me on this and, and I will add a logical tone to it so we can speak the same language we need for healing, okay? Let's not get lost in the delivery so much as how it applies how you can logically go well yeah i can see how that makes sense it, it's it follows a, the life cycle where it follows a, a logical pattern of behavior right so you're looking at it from behavior patterns and then spiritual people and religious if you will look at it as spirits walk in spirits and we're going to talk a little about that uh and, and what demons are entities all, all these fancy words for the same toxic as traits that we see as behavior traits and very predictable and understanding that you can get lost in the rabbit hole when the warnings have always been there regardless of how it was delivered understand don't get lost in how it was delivered what book it came from what origin understand the message can we as a collaborative group, agree on that much. That our ancestors gave a shit enough to etch the warnings in stone to last for millennia. That's agape love. But don't get it twisted. You command nothing in that realm whether it be someone toxic you can't fix them you can't fix stupid at the same time at the same time <laughs> pretty privileged <laughs> let me tell y'all something <laughs> the temptations the temptations is there look no shit aside what we need to understand then, the walk-in spirit is the spirit of, like, anger. I'll give you an analogy real quick, and then we're going to get this breathing exercise done. You feel me? It's like going to a movie, and the ending is way off. You, you thought it was going to be, right? It just threw you off, and you feel an emotion. But what you understand is anything that, anything that disturbs your peace was a manipulation especially like a movie because it's not even real and you're made to feel a certain way for the rest of the day or week this is what narcissists do create movies to extract emotion and reaction and it doesn't even exist it's make belief they made it up this is why it's important. I want you to understand that you don't need to be giving, giving freely of any kind of emotion so, so quickly. You don't need to be investing that way. You need to be observing. You know, you, you've ever seen demons screaming for validation and everybody's walking past them. Everybody's ignoring them because they done caught on to the game. It's kind of like looking at someone that's begging on the street corner with a cardboard sign, then they fold it up and hop into the Mercedes in the parking lot across the street at the Taco Bell and go home. Warriors, narcissism hides in many skin suits. The traits, the behaviors, the manipulations are taught from one to another. This is how the demon skips hosts, jumps hosts. It's a walk-in spirit. 
See, a spirit can walk in and manifest itself in a way to steal, rob your mind of precious time to see and take advantage of opportunities. No, it can't do that because it's so busy in the mind fuckery from something that didn't exist and has robbed you of being able to see this in plain sight. You're walking over $100 bills to pick up fake ass pennies. Now do I have your attention? Can I get a what what? Look, it's a gentle, necessary bitch slap. I hope you got your Bibles. If not, pause, come back. We're gonna do this breathing exercise, five seconds. Let's do this, come on. Release slowly. <laughs> all right, all right. Y'all ready to blow your mind? All right, go to Mark chapter five. Go to Mark chapter five. And we're gonna go over some things. I'm going to read it and paraphrase from narcissist, logical, and the, the spiritual context is in the verse itself, the chapter, okay? We can't add nor take away, but we can understand clearly, directly and logically, how we need to be operating between emotion and logical are 3D and uh, the mind tricks that are played on us by manipulators and how to distinguish the two and how you can command certain boundaries but you can't take that spirit out of its hosts. See, you're limited. You've been trying to fix it. You've been trying to play God. You better get the fuck out the way. Check this out. Mark chapter 5, verse 1. They went across the lake to the region of Gerasenes. When Jesus got out of the boat, a man with an impure spirit came from the tombs to meet him. This man lived in the tombs, and no one could bind him anymore, not even with a chain. For he'd often been chained hand and foot, but he tore the chains apart and broke the irons on his feet. No one was strong enough to subdue him. Night and day, among the tombs in the hills, he would cry out and cut himself with stones. Chains on his hands and feet could not contain him. The possession gave him strength, superpowers. But check this out in verse 5. Night and day among the tombs and in the hills, he would cry out and cut himself with stones. Why? Why? Because the man was seeing the demons. See, that's what the possession is. The hosts, the man, making impulsive decisions without regard to consequence. Now, is face to face and now yells, cries out, and begins to cut himself. So do narcissists know they're narcissists? Oh, they're self-aware. When they threaten to want to off themselves, hurt themselves, overdose, almost enter themselves into rehabs for the 15th time. Warriors, chapter, chapter 5, verse 6 starts again. When he saw Jesus from a distance, he ran and fell on his knees in front of him. This is a possessed man. He shouted at the top of his voice, What do you want with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? In God's name, don't torture me. For Jesus had said to him, Come out of this man, you impure spirit. He identified the narcissist, the psychopath, the sociopath, however many paths. 
this host was carrying. In fact, could it be said that just his presence alone rattled his demons? Because he first confessed it before Jesus commanded it. Now check this out. Then Jesus asked him, What's your name? Oh, oh, uh-uh. Say what? What's your name? That's kind of like you in the logical side. Let's switch. And you're talking to a possessed person, someone that you know. What do we call a possessed person in logical sense? Embodying different personalities. <gasps> what the hell you say? Sure enough. And not many of y'all have seen it in comedy. Who am I talking to right now? Which one am I conversating with right now? The 14-year-old or the adult? Sound familiar? Ever thought it? Jesus asked him, what is your name? Verse 9. Let's go to... My name is Legion. He replied, for we are many. Let's chew on that for just a minute. My name is Legion. We are many. How can that happen? Let's go to logic. Let's switch, but not lose each other. You following me? Stop what the fuck you're doing. Look at me. Come on. This is serious shit. This is where the crossroads meets and our logical mind needs to be able to bounce back and forth. This is how you navigate through chaos, okay? Pump and dumps. Casual date, dating. We all know what that means. We grown, we grown as DNA waste baskets. Passing throughs, sexually transmitted demons, entities, spirits, traits, behaviors, acceptance of society standards diluting your logical moral compass. Can I get a what what? I am legion is the accumulation of horrible ass connections and memories made they were all built on lies and a fairy tale. Let's move on. Verse 11. Well, let's go to 10. And he begged Jesus again and again not to send them out to the area. No, they don't, these demons, these entities, these legions, these spirits, these multiple personalities don't want to be discarded into the ethers. See, they want to be necessary and belong. Even if it means this. A large herd of pigs was feeding on the nearby hillside. The demons begged Jesus, send us among the pigs, allow us to go into them. He gave them permission, and the impure spirits came out and went into the pigs. The herd about, do you know numbers? 2,000. About 2,000 in number rushed down a steep bank into the lake and were drowned. Look, even the hogs had good sense to know this shit don't feel right and off themselves. One spirit per pig. Can you imagine the legions that possess narcissism, psychopaths, sociopaths, and you trying to stay around and fix it? You want to hang around and associate with it. You want to rub elbows and understand it. You think you got that special something that can wake them up when your only purpose was to do this. 
and this awakening to show gratitude and get this you have a command to understand only one has the power to cast out those demons your commander in chief showed you he did it multitudes of times what more must be said to let you know you're limited you have the power to identify the demons and to and to keep them from jumping on you because you can call them by name you want me to give you an example who am i talking to right now who am i speaking to which one the 14 year old the 10 year old or the adult you know because one minute you got wisdom the next you're out there pumping and dumping. Actions ain't lining up. You feel me? You are able to identify it, call it out, and keep that spirit from jumping onto you, whether it be anger, envy, greed, or materialism. Lust. See, sexual addictions is a scream for help, not a pat on the back. That's the worst way to cope. Not to be celebrated. You see, but in your world, we know what virtue is and loyalty. It's a currency. And it's why narcissists will lie about what their value is. On the one hand, they participate. On the second, they'll lie and tell you with some virtue signaling what they're about. In this awareness, you have one command and one command from the Commander-in-Chief directing you what to do once you wake the hell up. You want to know what it is? Let's start right here. Verse 18. Mark 5 verse... Chapter 5 verse 18. As Jesus was getting into the boat, the man who had been demon-possessed begged to go with him. Wouldn't you? You just make me feel better. Over 2,000 mini-me's participating in some fuck, you know, some fuckery. Check this out. Uh-uh, Jesus did not let him. He said, no, look, go home, go to your own people and tell them how much the Lord has done for you and how he has had mercy on you. What's your command? Show your testimony. When? When you're ready? Or right now, right now? Hmm. So let's see. We know what narcissism is. We've been warned through tablet. We've been warned through stone. We've been warned through papyrus, papers, papyrus, rice, smoke signals, everything. Eskimos even drew shit on bones. Everybody warning everybody. And what do you get from this? Understanding through down through through the shared information, one understanding. You can't convert these people, you can't change them, but you can warn how to identify them and discard them. Excommunicado. Not to be a part of your circle. And it's earned. It's not a blood right. It's not a birthright. Warriors, you also learn how to identify them because what are they going to do? They're going to cry out and they're going to cut themselves with stones. What else is going to happen? Well, in identifying them, you can keep them from jumping on you. And by keeping them from jumping on you, you can also now go home and tell others about how you did what you did. Because now you're a balanced warrior. Logically, now, you see the patterns. Warriors, if you don't think walk-in spirits aren't real, think about the last time or the next time you get upset. And I want you to think about what it is that made you upset and if it was really your problem. Is there anything you can do to change it? Then why 
Are you going to let it take power over your day? Why is that demon winning? Well, your walk-in spirits aren't all evil either. You need to watch for the ones that give you the butterfly feelings. The feels. The ones trying to get in close and give you hugs a lot. Are the ones that can cut you the deepest. This awareness wasn't free. And it's made you stronger because you had to walk away from what was closest to you and you had to do it alone. Look at me, wipe your eyes. Bet your ass the devil knows your name. And if you're a logical thinker, well then bet your ass your enemies won't cross your path again. Warriors, get out there and own it. Thanks for your support. Thanks for being there with each other, or for each other. Oh, and the merch. Need to, I don't know, y'all can't see my merch. Look. Now you can see my merch. <laughs> cool. Hey, I appreciate it. It's never goodbye. It's always until next time, Warriors. Eventually, you're going to be put to the test. You will be the voice of reason giving hope and humanity into a broken heart. And you'll have identified in that person actions, deliberate changes in lifestyle that will move you to understand that this is a wounded warrior, not an imposter. Your test will be Will you share what you know? Will you change that life that one day may save yours? Or hell? All of ours. Your voice matters, warriors. I'm proud of you. Like your chest is out there. This ain't no fucking pity party. Own it. Come back telling your stories. Speak only, as King Leonidas would say, of the victory. Speak only of the victory! <laughs> Namaste, Warriors. Oh, and I've been counting down.